Hello everyone, Morp here, and on this guide, I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to maximize the amount of caps that you make on your vendor. I'm going to be starting out showing the, some very basic tips on how to place your cap for people that are directly out of the vault, and progressively as I go, I'll show more and more tips on maximizing your caps and what to sell and how much to sell and stuff like that. So first of all, I... And here right outside of vault 76 and that's gonna be a first little tip for everyone here uh, you have many choices on where to place your camp there's vault 76 you got the crater you got Fort Atlas you have uh, the White Springs refuge you have foundation um, you also have rusty pick if I have it right next to somewhere that's free somebody that's over here on the other side of the map that wants to come check the vendor but it's going to cost 50, 60 caps to go check it out. They might just say, you know what? I'll just go right over to Vault 76 and run down here to check it for free. Another tip that you can place your camp right next to seasonal events. You know, like once Fashnak is around here right by Helvetia. You know, if we put it right where the event finishes, you know, everyone's going to be right at that spot. And they're going to be like, all right, well, let's go check out the vendor since we're here. So anyway... Let's cover the, the, the pure basics here. So you're going to go into your pit boy and down at the bottom, and I already have the camp here, but there's the option to move the camp for 40 caps. And I'm going to place it anywhere in here. If anywhere that the, the camp module is green means you can place it. But if you're next to like um, a in-game place like a quest item place or, or, or any kind of that thing, it's not going to let you place it. So you can also utilize like the in-game stuff. So this this place so that I can have all this NPC and this stuff in in the the base, which can be very useful. But anyway, so we we place down our thing here, and this is going to be another tip that I will cover a bit more later. Is making a movable camp, especially starting out. If you just make a one single foundation thing with your bare necessities, uh, once I go and I move my camp anywhere in the on the map once i go and try to place it one foundation can be pretty much placed anywhere but if i was trying to make like a whole big base here and i went to go move my camp once i do move it uh, i wouldn't have the option to replace this item uh it'd make me basically rebuild everything else all right let's cover the next big tip which is utilizing the actual camp module here to get people to spawn in now, if you notice in your build menu, it's a large circle here. You see the green circle going all the way around? Uh, think about it like this. If you place this camp module kind of like in this section over here, people are going to spawn into your base in this general area. If you put it, you know, up here in this kind of area, people are going to spawn in up here. You know, if I put it down at the bottom of the circle, down the bottom of that cliff, people are going to spawn in down there, which can be really annoying. I place it right here so that when people do spawn in, they're going to kind of spawn in with the vendor facing them and they'll see the base and you can test it out by spawning in your own base have friends kind of spawn in there and just you'll figure out where um the focal point when people spawn in and you can base your your visual base ideas off of that all right i'm going to give just a few examples to show the tip that is going to be next on deciding what you're going to be selling and using where you want to place your camp to best accommodate that. So I'm here at the Wayward, which is like a low level area. And people that are going to be around here aren't going to be having much caps and they're going to be in need of like really common stuff. So this alt I have set up to, they just basically have some really, really simple stuff. So I have this movable camp that I just made. I'm going to place it kind of uh, on this side of the camp. I'm going to grab my camp module so that uh, I'm going to put it over on this side so that when people do spawn in, uh, they will spawn in kind of on this side to see the camp module. And stuff that I put onto this guy are plans. And I got a, a lot of just really simple plans that are going to people are going to come across very often. I got them placed real priced real cheap just to get rid of them and have people be able to buy them. So another big tip is if you specialize on selling specific things, uh, just as an example, Enclave Mods, since everyone's going to be coming to Watoga to look for Enclave Mods, if you have your camp sitting right next to it, people that are looking for them already, and you have your vendor here, and, you know, if you're going to specialize in selling just those, um, you, having them right next to the farmable place is a great idea. 
Now this tip also applies for anything in the game that you're going to specialize in selling. Such as rare apparel, you can make a camp over by Charleston Station or by Fort Defiance if you want to specialize in just selling apparel. Like rare stuff, just basically choose your location of your camp to where you're going to be specializing in stuff that you're going to be selling, uh, which will help you in the long run for sure. All right, this next tip deals with knowing how much caps you can hold. Let's say right now I have 1,600 caps, so I know that I can sell a whole bunch of stuff and have a bunch of room. But the main thing is, let's say that the total amount of stuff that you have for sale is in, you know, the millions. You know, if you have just a bonkers amount of stuff that if you... If you sold everything, it would be drastically over 40,000 caps. If that's the case, only have one vendor. But if you added up absolutely everything in your vendor and it's less than 40,000 caps, you have four vendors out there to, to make it easier for random people that are coming to your base. And let's say you're in an event and you're at the Scorch Beast Queen and you're fighting. And people are just spamming your vendor and you look down at your thing and you're at 39,000 caps. I have a little tip here that I utilize to kind of make sure that I can instantly switch over. Uh, what I did with my original two bases that I got in the game, because uh, you get two for free, I placed down my very first base here, and I intentionally put it at the, like I knew where I put the camp module down, which is right here. And then I had my secondary base from the map, and I placed it down as well, right at the exact same spot, so that they overlap each other. And I do this for times when, like, um, I can't get to an event, I'm in a daily ops, or I'm in whatever, and people are spamming the crap out of my vendor. I could just click on the map, and I can click over to the max caps thing. I don't have to worry about it being blocked if it was somewhere else, because the thing that's blocking it is my base. And it instantly switches over to my secondary base. Now, that it can be a very useful tip that can save you a lot of caps if people are buying you out quickly. Alright, for the next section, we're going to be talking about ways to really maximize the amount of caps that you make out of your vendor. And going over what to sell, and kind of how to price stuff, and how to learn your pricing and all that. Uh, but the very first tip that we're going to do is covering um, your actual camp module and what you have to, to show for your vendor. Now, whether or not people are clicking from here to kind of cycle through to see what the available stuff is and all the different vendors, or if they're just hovering over on the map and kind of looking over here, all right, that guy's got some cool stuff looking, uh, you know, not too bad. I might go check that out. Uh, but the limited information that you get from this map information, you can really maximize it by putting at least one thing in every category here. Now, if you notice, this guy's only got four four things you know I might be interested but if I see this and just the simple fact that the list is bigger will entice people to come to your base more and some things to consider uh, I know for me personally if somebody has a lot of three-star weapons or a lot of apparel or a lot of plans I'm gonna be more interested in actually going and checking out their base I just set this up just for the example sake but something like um, this vendor over here that's got 16 armor, that might want to go check out. You know, 18 weapons. You know, that is definitely going to entice people to your base. Alright, so the basic things that are going to really attract people to your base are obviously weapons and plans. And those always, the more you have of those on your list, the more people are likely to come and check out your base. And there are other things that are always going to sell really well, uh, such as ammo. You know, if you have 5.56, 5, 45, you know, plasma cells and fuel, and you have the Ultrasight ver versions of them, you, those are always going to be good sellers. Uh, also, things like junk, you know, if you sell a lot of lead, people will buy lead, copper, you know, the stuff that's used for ammo creation. People will definitely come by to buy just that kind of stuff. Also, stuff like... Um, Sugar bomb rads or, you know, sugar, pepper, spices, mentats, berry mentats, uh, live and love threes, all of the stuff that's related to XP farming. Those are always going to be hot, hot items to sell in your vendor. All right. Also, um, generally other just rare stuff, you know, like hundreds long coats, um, stuff that people server hop over and over to try to find like enclave mods, 
you know, those are always going to be things that if you put them in your vendor and you put them at a good price, they will always sell. You don't have, you're not going to have something sitting in your vendor for very long. This is White Spring train station. This one kind of covers all of the bases for tips on where to put your base. There's a free fast travel next to it. It's a train station where people are going to be coming by to uh, sell their script or to use a vendor to get their, their daily caps and everything. And it's centrally located throughout the map. Uh, but the double-edged sword part of it is it is always kind of blocked. Like when I was uh, trying to find that uh, vendor to go and show you the comparison for other people's camps, it took me like 15, 15 servers before I was able to place it down. So definitely take that in consideration if you want to use this spot. Um, but anyway, the things that you can sell are script. And script is always going to be a good seller. And my rule of thumb when I sell script personally is let's say it's a three star um some people just do 100 caps per star which i don't actually like i do it based on the amount of script that you get so a three star let's say this is a regular armor this is going to be 24 script so i times it by 10 so 10 caps per script so like a three star uh, regular armor 240 caps you know three star weapon would be 400 caps you know, uh, one star weapon would be 50 caps. That, so you can use that to your advantage if you put, you know, 50 three star weapons on there at script prices at a train station. People will come there and they'll they'll even buy it, especially right here. There, they need to get their 500 script a day. Boom, boom, boom. Sell, sell, sell. All right, let's cover the pricing for items. And this is going to be a generalized rule that you should keep in mind. Uh, consider the weight of an item. If stuff, something is really, really heavy, like a 25 pound, 30 pound weapon or armor, um, stuff like that, the lower that you sell stuff, the quicker that it will sell. So something really heavy, sell it cheaper so you can get rid of it to get rid of that stash weight. If you have a reduced weight weapon or something that's super, super light, you can price stuff on the higher end so that you can make a little bit more profit on it. And if it sits there a little bit longer, that's fine. So. All right, so let's cover how to actually price items. And one big key thing that I want everyone to know is that 40,000 caps is not the price limit for items. Just because the most amount of caps somebody can hold is 40,000 doesn't mean that the most expensive item in the game is 40,000. There's a classification of item that is called trade only. The most sought after, the rarest things, the things that every single player would drool for, those are going to be worth way more than 40,000 caps, and you should not be selling those items on your vendor. You should look into how much the actual trading value of those things are and go and trade for other things that are amazing. If you have an Asylum Red Dress or you know, a Quad Explosive 25 Railway, something that everyone can benefit from and everyone super, super wants, use other big badass items to trade. All right, let's cover some resources that are gonna be really good for you to learn price for items especially the god rolls and stuff there are you can go to facebook you can go to reddit you can go to discord um i do suggest market 76 this is their their reddit page you can go into there and you can price check items and uh people will come and tell you a generalized price for things you know tell you what's really good what's not so good uh same with their discord the market 76 discord has a really nice feature as well as a bunch of other discords. It's not just Market76, but they have price check channels. So if you have a question on any item in the game, you can go and post in there, like price check please on a certain item, and people will come back and tell you, you know, Tatterfield jacket, 800,000, should be more than that actually. Um, you know, you could post your picture, you can ask questions, people will come back and uh, give you a good idea of what to what is selling like currently, because prices do change often. There are other resources that are going to be useful for you to learn, like specific items and what is good and what isn't good. Uh, there's websites like fed76.info that actually is a really good tool for teaching you uh, what items are good. You know, you can go item by item and, you know, it can tell you the information, you know, the fixer is the most powerful rifle, yada, yada, and do all this thing. I do highly warn that their actual algorithm and the, the price thing that they use is really wonky. They have a price system and the price that they give, I do not use these. You can use these as kind of a guide on how to learn prices, 
you could take this information and you can go into price check channels and discord or or wherever you're going to go look it up and kind of compare um but it is a really good used tool to learn the like like learn what is good and what isn't good because over time once you kind of have an idea of what is a god roll what isn't a god roll things to look for it's going to really help you out in the long run Another great resource through Fed76 is the plans section. Um, this is information from the plan collectors. For this, you can go and look up pretty much any item or any plan in the game. Let's say just like a flamer plan. Now you can type it in here and it will show you like if uh, you know if a plan is sold by a vendor, it can tell you how much the in-game vendor would sell it for. So if you got a flamer plan uh, from a mob and you wanted to go sell it on your vendor, you can go in here and see that uh, the minimum price you can get it is 2,372 from a vendor. So if you put place price that in your vendor for cheaper than that, it's going to be a, a good deal for anyone to come and buy it that doesn't want to go and try to farm it for themselves. And for things that do not sell or are not sold from player vendors or excuse me from in-game vendors uh they do have a generalized price of these and use these also as kind of just uh their opinion type of thing don't base your ideas solely off of what fed 76 says some of them are generally okay um but a lot of them can be really off once you get into the extremely rare things you can sort stuff by price and you know for, for generally speaking some of these like the r more rare ultra site plans 2000 caps each is kind of okay uh, but once they get into the extremely rare stuff and you can click and see how rare it is on by clicking the info tab here some of these these sell for way way more i traded an asylum red dress for the last calibrated shock that i got and that's worth about a million caps um, that was just my trade. It doesn't mean that, that that's going to be the price that you can get from your trades. But use this as a tool to learn kind of what is rare, what isn't rare. Okay, along with that, they also have an apparel section. Uh, this is really nice too. It uh, You can look up any apparel in here. Let's say we can talk about the asylum dresses. You know, you can sort by asylum dresses and you can click by rare to see, you know, what is super rare, what isn't. You could even look up, you know, they show you information on anything you're looking up to show you the uh, kind of the drop rate of it, you know, where to find it. If it does, if it is sold by a vendor, it'll tell you how much it is there. Uh, so this is also a really nice tool. All right, another site that I use to kind of compare prices, especially if I'm dealing with plans, is NukaTrader.com. Again, this is purely just off of, you know, use these as a tool. You can kind of look at both and get generalized ideas do not count these as what they're actually selling for just use them as a generalized tool to kind of show what is sort of rare what isn't what isn't rare uh, this site you can also look up apparel as well and get kind of like a generalized idea and for the most part it is generally kind of what stuff really does sell for unless it gets to the extremely rare stuff you know like um a yellow dress, 27,000 caps. That's not too bad. I, I've sold them for 30,000 kind of range, 15, 20,000 for a pink. But it they really, really fail at the extremely rare items. You know, like a forest, uh, forest things, the second most rare asylum, 30,000 caps. That's a little bit cheap. I could see it selling for 50 to 100,000, possibly, you know, 40,000 caps range. Um, but the red asylum dress is extremely rare and it is extremely sought after. But this site would say, oh, um, it's probably just only worth uh, 60,000 caps. So definitely, definitely be aware, be aware and wary of anything that uh, those sites tell you uh, when it deals with prices that are over 40,000 caps. If it's if it's showing in that range for anything anything close to that make sure that you go into like a price check channel and actually ask what stuff is really selling for at that moment because you definitely don't want to be putting something on your vendor that uh you can trade like a hundred thousand lead for but you sold it for twenty five thousand caps so so the more that you know the better that you're gonna be in the long run for making the most amount of profit and just being a, a general person that knows what's good, what isn't good. And the more that you use those sites, the more that you're going to be able to just have a, a, an understanding and 
and it does get easier and you'll you'll just have a second nature to pricing things all right everyone i hope this is helpful to you and um make sure that you let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this i can make more of these videos and kind of give uh more more specific details on anything that you guys are uh, interested in uh, but this is just generalized tips uh, there's a lot of items that i put in my vendor just specifically to kind of show you uh in the tabs and stuff so not everything that you saw on my vendors were accurate prices i just kind of threw them in there um but yeah make sure to click like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you guys think um i also stream on twitch and youtube pretty often if you guys are interested you can come click the notification bell and see when i'm streaming there's also a link down in my the description of this video to the discord and also i'm a link to all of the different information that i had posted in the video so i hope this is all help is all helpful to you guys and uh, we'll see you out there in the wasteland